Hi, I'm Shannon Stewart, Senior Data Scientist at the Global Fund to End Modern Slavery. This is the second in a series of videos explaining the forced labor risk estimator tool that I've developed over the last couple of years. This tool is designed to detect the risk of forced labor at the firm level. In the first video, we went through some of the open source data sources that you can use to gather more information about the operational characteristics of a business. In this second video, we're going, going to focus on entity recognition because we need to know if a single entity has appeared in multiple data sources. And each entity may be represented a few different ways. So the solution that I've implemented for this is based off of the Python package ddupe. I'm going to assume that if you're, if you're working on a project like this, you already basically know how to use Python and are just trying to implement this specific type of task. So I'm not going to go over a ton of, uh, of the details of this, but I'm going to go through where I made some critical decisions that could help you replicate my work and expand on it. This all comes from my Git repository for this project. So it's at github.com slash Shannon GFEMS slash flare. And I've refactored all of my code into one single very long script. Um, so we're not going to use all of these um, packages in this video, but they're used at some point in the script, in the global script. The functions that I'm going to go through quickly at the top here come from the dedupe tutorial, and I will show you where that is. It's at docs.dedupe.io, and you can go through um, example code there that I think could be helpful in achieving this. But um, basically, none of their examples are dealing specifically with business data, and so I'm going to take you through some of the decisions that I made that optimized the dedupe recognition for business data. There's a pre-processing algorithm here. And uh, in this pre-processing algorithm, we're basically cleaning up some of the business names using Unicode and regex to make the casing and extra spaces and quotes and new lines irrelevant. So here in, in this pre-processing, we're going to get rid of new lines and certain punctuation and extra space. Cluster merge comes from the dedupe tutorial. I don't think I made any changes to that one. I think that covers it for the functions. I do some other data cleaning later down in the script, and we'll go through that. The larger script goes through importing all of the data that I collected from third-party sources. And these would be, for instance, the business intelligence website, Zaubacorp, some import-export records that came from India that were obtained through the database Panjiva, which is available by subscription. Um, we did a little bit of walking through um, company ownership records based on, uh, in India, directors of a company have a unique ID that identifies them as the director of a company or multiple companies. So we know for sure that we're not capturing people that just simply happen to have the same name because of this unique identifier. And so wherever we found companies that, uh, had the same ownership in the same industry. We're sort of feeding them in as either directly connected to the firms that have uh, known cases of forced labor, or in some cases, just sharing one or more directors. So they might be more loosely connected. The data that we're importing from all these includes things like the company name, unique identifiers, the address, 
and features like the amount of authorized capital that they have, the amount of paid up capital, their email addresses, their latitudes and longitudes where those are known. And um, in some cases, I had some extra features like the total number of laborers directly employed, but um, I couldn't, that data was too sparse. I couldn't make use of it because very few firms have that data available. So once we've loaded in all the data that we collected from those third party sources, um, we change all of the uh, Latinate character strings to uppercase, just so that we, we know that we're recognizing them if they're identical. So that's what is happening here. This is another place where we're cleaning some of the business specific information. So I'm getting rid of some of the punctuation and company names because it's not consistently applied enough to make it good for recognizing these companies across different data sets. I'm also stripping out very low information pieces of the strings. This includes abbreviations for limited and private, private limited, each of those independently incorporated. We sometimes see an inversion of limited and private, but these strings are so common and so low information that they don't add anything to our deduplication. And in fact, because they're systematically missing from some data sources and not others, they can interfere with our ability to recognize different companies from different different data sources. Um, I also got rid of the rupee symbol because of some encoding errors in some of the data sources. In some cases, there were inconsistent uses of commas. So in some jurisdictions, it's common to place a comma in a number every three orders of magnitude. And in some places, it's more common to use four orders of magnitude. And because there was like a conflict between different data sources on this practice, I just got rid of all the commas. The way that dedupe works, once you've done this, you create one master list of all of the data you have and you set up a placeholder for a settings file and a trainings file. And this is all in the dedupe tutorial. So there's nothing new about, about this in my code compared to what you can get from the dedupe tutorial. The fields that I decided to use for matching businesses include uh, their company name, the address, the unique identifier where we have it, and the email address. Um, so for instance, if you just open up the Indian company registry, it's easy to recognize that there are some businesses that are just using the same email address as their contact point, um, which I think is a good indicator that they're essentially owned and run by a circle of people that's overlapping enough that they're essentially different firms that are part of a cluster that are all working toward the same business purpose. And so we can, for the purposes of this model, we consider that the same entity. All of the code that is on the screen now comes from the dedupe tutorial. And what the output of this is are clusters of companies that are, according to this machine learning algorithm, probably the same thing. So what's going to happen when this um, script is run is that it will ask the user to compare two lines of data that would include the name, the unique identifier, the address, and the email. And sometimes those fields are blank, but it'll put up two different lines of data and it asks the users to say, this is the same, this is not the same, I'm unsure, or I want to skip it. Or I want to end the training phase. And so this is where there's going to be the most variability between implementations of this model. It's going to depend a little bit on 
the user's decision about what the what is the same entity. If you'd like to replicate my code exactly, get in contact with me directly, and I can share my trained settings files with you. Once we have the clusters identified, they get a cluster ID and a confidence score. And from there, we can start narrowing down on individual companies or business entities, which are groups of companies that are all operating under the same leadership in the same industry for the same business purpose. So that covers the implementation of the Python library dedupe for discerning these clusters of businesses. And I think I'm going to leave it there until our next video, where we're going to start uh, making the operational characteristics of these firms more uniform. So we'll see you in the next video.